excuse me if I mispronounce this, Sidanham College in Bombay, India. Um, he is currently working on a graduate degree in philosophy from the Ayn Rand Institute, and he also is nine credits short of his MBA. You're welcome. Hey. Um, Christopher Burton is a local Phoenix resident. He's a mechanic, a chemist by trade, a libertarian anarchist, and he's an act activist and he has a casual interest in political philosophy and he's also a member of ASU SFL. Oh, yeah. Come on. Okay. Alright, um, Chris, if you'd like to begin. Okay, I'm going to basically just, I, I prepared a presentation here. Um, five minutes isn't a lot of time to cover this topic, but I'm just going to read off of this and kind of do my best. Um, the question is, uh, what is an idea? Uh, is it a physical object like uh, a hammer or maybe this bottle that only one person can exclusively possess or uh, one person can use at any given time? Um, no, ideation is a mental state. It is a modality of the person thinking or aligning their brain waves in such a way that they mentally see the conceptual abstraction they are ideating upon. This means that ide ideas do not exist. <laughs> I should have had this memorized. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. Exists. Okay. okay. This means that. Uh, uh, but yeah. This means that ideas do not exist, or at least there is no evidence that they that they do. In fact, there is no such extant thing as an idea. When we talk about ideas, we are talking about conceptual abstractions, a phenomenon that only exists or occurs in the mind, so to speak. Uh, the phenomenon of ideation is a modality of the brain of a living, thinking being. When we say Bob has an idea, we are describing something about Bob's brain and the electrical signals that are exhibited in it that allow Bob to mentally see the conceptual abstraction we call an idea. If other individuals somehow become aware of this conceptual mental abstraction, either by hearing Bob's words, reading something he wrote, or observing something he made or sold, they are now aware of this information. They have induced this information into their own brain, thereby causing the electrical signals in their brain to allow them to mentally see the conceptual abstraction as well. They are not harming Bob. They are simply imitating Bob's thoughts and subsequent actions on those thoughts. They're basically aligning their brain, their brain patterns to match, you know, to match his. They're thinking upon the same thing he's thinking of. But nothing has been created. Nothing exists at least physically, we're talking about a phenomenon. An exclusively held or controlled state of mind is called a secret. It is impossible to exclusively possess a state of mind once others are aware of this state of mind. Another way to say this is that once a secret is disclosed, it cannot be enclosed, walled in, or appropriated exclusively. One can only threaten others and attempt to int intimidate them in such a way that they are afraid to act on the information that they now, uh, that they now know these threats are today commonly seen in what is called intellectual. I'm sorry. Sorry, right. I shouldn't have made so big. Intellectual property laws, which are patents, copyrights, trademarks, and other government grants of monopoly privilege. These monopoly grants do not punish invasive behavior, uh, like a, like if someone was to strike you or take something away from you, de depriving you of access to it. They punish learning and emulation. In other words, they do what all monopolies do. They punish competition. They also punish the marketing of derivative innovation, innovation that stems from the process of combining concepts and or adding to previously learned concepts to form new ones. The concept of private property, on the other hand, deals with socially constructed, uh, deals with a socially constructed social norm or rule. This rule is often enforced by people in order to avoid conflict in a reality where all matter and space is rivalrous and cannot be controlled by everyone at the same time. For example. A car, while it is possible for two people or more to share a car by trading it back and forth, using it for different goals at different times, it is not possible for two people to drive the same car to different places at the same time. I cannot drive a car north while you drive the same car south. I cannot exist in the same space you currently exist in at the same time. At any given moment, only one of us can drive a single car where we want to go at any given time. And property rights is simply a system to manage who gets to use what, when, in, in order to avoid, uh, avoid conflict. When it comes to information, unlike with material or space, 
An infinite number of people can think and act upon information at the same time. One minute. This is why the concept of intellectual property is nonsensical. To assert a private property claim over something is to assert the following. Only one person can use this object or space exclusively at one time, and I believe that that person should be me or us, because I or we was the first to start using this object or space. To assert a property claim over a mental abstraction is a very different kind of claim. It is to claim that only you should be able to use or act on this mental abstraction, even though others using and acting on this mental abstraction does not interfere with your use of this mental abstraction. In short, there is no invasion or aggression committed against you when another imitates, emulates your economic activities. There is only competition. To employ IP law against your competitors is to threaten them with the law to cease from competing with you and leave your monopoly privilege intact. <laughs>